Hey guys, welcome to Suppressor Stuff. So my name is Saul, I'm here with Rooftop Defense, and yeah, so this is episode one. The purpose of this video is to just lay down the foundation, the premise of the entire video series. So we're going to be doing a lot of suppressor testing. Uh, we're going to be testing back pressure and flash. Uh, we're going to go ahead and number all the videos, just so that when you guys go and take a look later, it's easy to share. So this will be episode one, you know, you can go ahead and share later, be like, hey, episode three or whatever for XYZ suppressor. Um, notably, we're not going to be testing sound reduction, and I think that's a good reason. There's a good reason for that, it's just because there's a lot of comprehensive sound reduction testing out there. You know, they do a lot of comprehensive uh, sound reduction testing from the muzzle and the shooter's ear. So the information that we're putting out is just try to fill some holes and to complement that existing information. You know, this is in by no way trying to compete with that information. Um, but why are we doing this? So, guys. First and foremost, y'all ask for it. Uh, we don't have like a company that sponsors us. In fact, y'all are the sponsor. You know, so anytime y'all go to the site and buy something, a lot of those profits and proceeds allow us to fund stuff like this. So like this testing, y'all have asked for it for a long time and I thought about it for a long time and you know, I realized it's something we can do. So I've been slowly kind of getting all the pieces together so we can go ahead and get this rolling. Um, so I'm pretty excited. I'm sure you guys are too. I got a little cheat sheet here to kind of keep me on track here. So yeah, the other main reason why we're doing this too is that buying a suppressor is kind of a unique thing, right? It's got that unconstitutional $200 tax stamp that once you spend it, you're never getting it back. And then you got that super long wait time involved. Um, so I'm sure some of y'all are like me. I've bought suppressors in the past, and then once it gets approved, you're just kind of like, wow, I'm really disappointed. <laughs> I wish I didn't buy this thing. So my objective here is to try to give y'all as much information as possible so when you go to buy your next suppressor, you're well informed. And that's what this is. We're gonna try to create a giant archive of back pressure and flash testing to complement all of the existing sound reduction testing. How we're gonna do that, we're gonna use only brand new suppressors. I think that's really important. So like if something strange happens during testing, it's not because it was a used suppressor and all the performance values are not because it was a used suppressor. So we're using all brand new unfired suppressors. Um, we bought all of these suppressors with our money that you guys gave us. So y'all have literally funded all of this. It's gonna be pretty cool. Um, how we're gonna test back pressure. Let's get into what back pressure is first in layman's terms. Back pressure is the flow resistance that's added to the gun. So if you put a suppressor on a gun, you know, there's going to be a value change in how the gun runs, right? So back pressure, it's going to input extra gas into the system. You know, it's going to change the rate of fire. It's going to change the chamber pressures. It's going to change how the gun essentially runs, you know? So the three big reasons why back pressure is important, measuring all of that, is one, the mechanical reliability of a gun. So if your AR is tuned, you know, 14 and a half inch mid-length gas system, you got an H2 buffer in there. If you add a suppressor that has a lot of back pressure, that buffer might not be enough anymore. It's now operating outside of the designed operating envelope, you know? So having like less back pressure helps that gun. Uh, the other thing is, you know, a good example as to why that's important is if we look at early HK416s, guns that had things like M4-2000s on them, you know, there were sometimes instances in which the action of the gun is running so fast that the magazine spring doesn't even have enough time to actually feed the gun. So you would end up having stoppages. Also, increased back pressure, it forces the gun to start extraction a little early. You know, the gun starts shooting a little rougher. So the chamber pressures, the increased chamber pressures results in a more abrupt action but it also results in shorter parts life so that more abrupt action that more rough action your parts are going to start breaking sooner um, and then lastly increased back pressure means more gas to the face your health the shooter's health all that's pretty important so you know that's the main reasons why we're monitoring back pressure let's get into how we're going to do it after a lot of thinking i decided we're going to use an m249 saw for this so all the barrels, they're gonna be Mark 46 barrels for reference. They're gonna be 14 inch barrels. They're all gonna start like this. Um, Dave Wilson, good friend of mine out in Colorado. He runs D Wilson MFG. He runs a shop and he can do a lot of stuff. So for me, 
he took all these Mark 46 barrels, he slightened them shortly, he re-threaded them to half by 28, and allowed us to put all of the common suppressor adapters. So now we're not having like one barrel and we're trying to take off the muzzle device. Like it's just a lot of work. So instead now we have a barrel for every single common suppressor adapter. It's gonna make things a lot smoother. Uh, let me take a look here. All right, so the M249 hose, I think this was a good choice because it gives us a large sample size, right? So we got a 100 round belt that we're gonna use. And when we establish a baseline of unsuppressed rate of fire at 100 rounds, and then we can compare that to 100 rounds right afterwards and see how fast that rate of fire speeds up or how little it doesn't, right? So it's a little exaggerated because these guns, um, they give us a large sample size. We're, as opposed to an AR where we're only getting 30 rounds or with a D60 we're getting 60 rounds. And then sometimes, you know, select fire ARs with a magazine, that rate of fire changes as the magazine is emptying. So I totally get it, guys. It's not apples to apples with your AR as to how this is going to apply. But testing all of the suppressors the same way, the same barrels, the same protocols, comparatively, we can go ahead and say, hey, you know, X suppressor compared to another suppressor increase the rate of fire by X amount, you know, in this same protocol that we're doing for everything. And then you guys can kind of take that information, you know, and see how it applies to you guys. You know, for some of the rifles that you're using, the back pressure might not be an issue at all. For some of y'all, you might think it is a big issue. But um, also, flat out, plain and simple, if you live in California, you know, and you live in New York, you live in a place where you can't own a suppressor, it's going to be fun just to watch. You know, you're taking a dump or whatever. You're going you're gonna to take a look at, oh, man, you know, full auto. We get to stress test the suppressors a little bit. You know, get to cook them up a little bit. Um, for this purpose, I do think the saw is a good choice. When I do shoot the suppressors, I'm going to be wearing the gas mask. So I'm going to be wearing the gas mask for every single suppressor. It's not going to be like, hey, he wore the gas mask for this one, and then he didn't wear the gas mask for this. I'm just going to wear the gas mask for all of them. And the reason for that is not because I'm a cringe lord. I'm doing it because I want to be able to see the target that I'm shooting, just so I make sure I don't send berms, I mean send rounds over the berm just because it's pretty important you know, <laughs> it's pretty important not to miss the berm, so I'm going to be wearing the gas mask for that uh, when we do the 249 testing again, it's going to be 100 rounds just 100 round nutsack we're going to burn all that, and then we're literally just going to mount the suppressor, and then we're going to fire another 100 rounds, and then in the video when we edit everything, we're going to show the 100 rounds unsuppressed and then we're going to show um, the suppressed 100 rounds and then we'll show them literally on top of each other and sort of the exact same time. So you guys can see in real time just how that suppressor impacts the rate of fire. Um, all right, cool. So the next thing we're gonna test is flash. I think flash is really cool. It doesn't really get talked about enough and no one's really been testing flash. The way we're gonna do it is actually fairly comprehensive. It's been, um, it's gotten more and more and more complex as we've kind of gone along. So we're gonna do two different barrel lengths. We've got an 11 and a half inch barrel, and then we've got a 16 inch barrel. So the main reason why I picked those is because, in my opinion, they're the most common barrel lengths out there. If you are going to a store, you know, the most common AR you're gonna find is a 16 inch AR. But as far as short barreled rifles go, your 11 and a half inch AR, I think is the most common length. So we're gonna test 11 and a half inch, 16 inch, and the main reason for that also is the shorter the barrel, the less time there is for powder to burn. Therefore, you're going to have more flash signature normally out of a shorter barrel. And then uh, ammo. Ammo is really important. In fact, I think the ammo actually gets talked about less than the flash. I think ammo is really, really, really important. So for this test, we bought a ton of PMC ammo. Uh, all the 100 round burns are going to be done with PMC. The flash testing is going to be done with PMC, and this is 55 grain X-Tac. I picked this because I'm a little biased. It's Korean-made ammo. You know, I get to support my family a little bit. You know, you get to see it. It's actually imported. It's got yellow on the box for that reason. Um, Black Hills, we're picking the Mark 262 Mod 1C round, and the reason for this is this is a very faithful clone of um, a lot of the issued ammo out there, and it's got a flash suppressant. So the purpose of this is to be able to show you guys, hey, 
This is what the flash signature looks like on your common 11 half inch barrel and your 16 inch barrel with range ammo. And then this is what it looks like with a common duty round. You know, just because the flash signature and the performance is gonna differ, right? So it's really important that that gets talked about. Um, just because like, obviously you're not gonna shoot this when you're training, but if you're buying a round for your duty gun or, or if you're like me, you're a responsible civilian and you're buying stuff for a rainy day, you know, that shit hit the fan kind of moment, you know, you kind of want to know, you know, so the goal here is for me to provide you guys with as much information as like, hey, this is what's going to look like with training ammo. This is what's going to look like with the duty round. And as far as how we're going to capture all of that, we're going to have multiple angles. So this is kind of where it gets a little freaky. Uh, we're going to have a side angle without any night vision. So it's going to be just darkness. It's going to be a side angle. And then we're going to have another side angle with night vision. And then down range, we're gonna have another camera that's actually facing the muzzle at about 25 yards. And why those are important, I think the side to side comparison just allows you to see the side to side comparison of the flash signature of all the cans. But the down range comparison, you know, a lot of the military testing and a lot of the mill guys will kind of understand is that if you're shooting at another human being that's gonna shoot back, you kind of wanna know what they're gonna see. So it's gonna be fairly comprehensive. It's gonna be 10 rounds, PMC, 11 half inch barrel. 10 rounds Black Hills, 11 half inch barrel, followed by 10 rounds PMC, 16 inch barrel, and then 10 rounds Black Hills, 16 inch barrel, with all three camera angles. And then the device we're gonna be using for the night vision is a L3 Harris PVS-14. This is an M914 Alpha. I got this from Lacentia Arms. Uh, they're based out of Kentucky. Bobby and the gang over there, really awesome people. Guys, if you haven't checked them out, you need night vision, go ahead, pick up the phone, give them an email or whatever. Cannot recommend them enough. They're really awesome people to get you all squared away. In fact, I had a request from Bobby and I was like, hey man, I need you to overnight me something. Can you get it to me quick? And, uh, you know, he came through for me, no problem. So I have nothing but good things to say about him. He goes way back, you know. Um, also, just a little cool thing, completely unrelated to the suppressor testing, you know. This is actually pretty cool. So I got two different magazines here, and in the dark, if you got two different sets of ammo, Magpul makes a tactile lock plate that you can actually replace the bottom lock plate, and it just has two little nubs on it. So like if your eyes are closed and you're grabbing a magazine, you can be like, oh yeah, you know, I got my 300 black subs in this one, and then I've got my 300 black supers in this one. So um, they're not readily available. I went on Magpul's site and bought a couple for this testing so I can know. Like, hey, I've got the Black Hills in this mag, and then I've got the PMC in this mag. But, uh, yeah, I think I got everything. And, yeah, that's a wrap. So we're going to go ahead and start making some of these videos. And, yeah, look forward to seeing you.